Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Leslie Picker, and today we are joined by Ryan Dietrich, Senior Market Strategist at LPL Financial. Ryan, welcome. Thank you, Leslie. Glad to be here. And just this week, the bull market is touching a milestone. It's turning nine years old. Can we see 10? We think we can, Leslie. Now, before I get started, I saw you spent you yesterday in Ohio. I spent the first 37 <laughs> years of my life in Ohio. It's always <laughs> going to be home, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Oh, absolutely. And you're getting right to yeah, good. Getting right to it. You know, yes, the bull market's nine. This is the second largest bull market ever. This is the second longest bull market ever. The longest ever was 1990s, which went about nine and a half years. Big question is, can it get to 10? We think it can, and here's why. In our opinion, bull markets do not die of old age. They die of excesses, whether it be overspending, overleverage, overconfidence. You know, we look at these things. We simply aren't seeing the same level of overs or excesses that we've seen in the past at major market peaks, economic peaks. We think we could be here in one year, and the economic cycle could still be growing, and we could still have a bull market on our hands. What pushes the market to the upside from here, though? Because we, you know, when we think about uh, different catalysts that could move the market to the upside, tax reform, you know, is something like that priced into the market? When you look at what's going on uh, in Washington and around the globe, you know, what are some of the factors that can continue to churn this market upward? Sure. Well, obviously, the tax reform is in there. Clearly, we just had a really strong fourth quarter earnings that can be there. But, you know, just look at the economic, it, it, most of the economic data that we've been seeing. You know, the leading economic index, LEI, is one of our favorite indicators, and that just came in at 6.2% year over year. Now, what does that mean to someone listening? Well, historically, when that goes negative year over year, we've seen a recession 14 months later. We're nowhere near seeing a recession when you look at that one particular indicator. And again, it's a nice one because it looks forward. Most economic data looks backward. That looks forward. Also, if you just look at technicals, we have a lot of participation. You know, semiconductors are making new all-time highs as we speak right now. Financials are participating. You look at the NYSE advanced decline line, how many stocks going up versus how many stocks going down. We see really broad participation. Yes, we just had a 10% correction in nine days and some volatility. Obviously, we're aware there could be more volatility as economic cycle ages, but there's a really good underpinning with the economics and on the technical front, broad participation. Those things suggest again to us that this bull market can, uh, can survive and continue to uh, flourish here. And I know you've been focused on the performance in January, which was quite strong. Uh, and looking back to various Januaries uh, throughout history and those uh, raking in more than 5% returns uh, seem to be a positive sign for the rest of the year. Um, is that something that you are focused on and think uh, bodes well for the remainder of 2018? We sure do. And what you're speaking about since 1950, when the SP 500 is up 5% or more in the month of January, like we just were, the full year has been higher 12 out of 12 times. The final 11 months higher 11 out of 12 times. It's a really strong performance. So it's as goes January goes the year. Believe me, you don't want to just blindly invest on one thing. When you see something like that with some of the other things I just touched on, a good start of the year normally means you're going to have continued strength. One last thing. February historically is one of the weakest months we we see on average. We just had a pullback in February. March and April, two of the stronger months. Then we get in the sell and may go away. Nonetheless, you know, the pullback in February wasn't very surprising to us. And all in all, that good start to year very well could mean potentially double-digit gains when we're all said and done. And that's what we're looking for here at LPL Research this year. Now, a lot of market participants look at this year and look at the potential for a rising interest rate environment and say, you know what, all of that, you know, excitement that we've seen over the last eight, nine years or so uh, could be dissipating this year because the Fed is starting to wind back uh, its program and there will be less liquidity in the market. Is that something that you're concerned about as a 2018 issue or something that you think could take effect more into the future? Sure. Well, new Fed leadership, if you go back to 1914, there have been 16 Fed chairmen now, you tend to see market volatility those first six months after new Fed leadership as the market kind of tests the new Fed. And we saw that clearly the, the very first day with a new Fed chair this time in early February. But think about this. We went back 50 years and we found 23 periods of higher rate environments. What do we mean by that? The 10-year yield was going higher. S&P 500 went higher 19 of those times. So just to blindly say higher rates do not equal a bullish stock market or they don't go together, they do. Historically, they tend to trend together until you get to about 5% on the 10-year yield. 
and that's when you kind of see a divergence. But lower yields starting to go higher along with the stock market, that's perfectly normal when you go back in history, and we think we're, again, right there this year. Is inflation a concern of yours, though? Because oftentimes, oftentimes those two things go hand in hand, and people sometimes begin to question you know, the Fed's ability to kind of get out in front of that inflation. I know that's a lot of uh, the concerns in steel country, uh, where people were looking at the potential for these tariffs to increase uh, some of the input inputs into uh, the industrial uh, companies that uh, that are uh, you know looking into this and looking to see how their margins will be affected. Um, is inflation something that's on your radar as you factor in the the length of the bull market? Sure, absolutely. When we started this year, we said inflation was one of our biggest worries because you have more inflation than expected. As you said, there are some potential reasons we could have more inflation. At the same time, though, you know, the core PCE, that's the Fed's favorite measure of inflation, it still came in at 1.6%, I believe, last month, nowhere near the 2% Fed target. So, yes, there's inflation coming in. You look at industrial metals, there's other areas that show it, but we're still not anywhere near worrisome areas. And the last thing I'll say, you know, wage growth came in at 2.9% recently. Everyone got very worried about that. Historically speaking, wage growth has to crack 4% before you tend to see the economy kind of bubble up and then start to go into a recession. We're clearly nowhere near 4% wage growth. So we still think inflation can come in, but the economy can handle it with the really strong earnings and underlying positive fundamental pinnings. And that can just be perfectly normal. And this cycle can continue to go at least one more year, maybe even further. All right. Some words of optimism. My thanks to Ryan Dietrich of LPL Financial. And thank you for watching Trading Nation. I'm Leslie Picker. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.